This is Billy Howell with Bent Outfitters. For all you fishing fanatics, this is the first of many broadcasts that we plan to do to put together for our faithful followers. We appreciate that. Um, anything we can do to bring added value. And today we're in the home of Jeff Vatican with Fish Sticks Rods. He is a custom rod builder. He also is specializes in the weed. So let's check in with Jeff and see what he's up to today. Hey Jeff, how are you today? I'm uh, busy right now. Uh, I'm getting by. What do you have going on in your shop today? I am weaving a red snapper for a custom rover in Louisiana. Oh, nice. So is this something you do on a regular basis? Uh, I used to do it more regular than I do it now. It's, you know, after a while you kind of get a little burnout, but you know, for special rods you do special things. So that's what we're doing. So is this something that's done pretty regularly or commonly in the industry, or is this something that's kind of unique? No, this is not what I would call common. Most 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 thread artists, which are custom rod builders who who, uh, who do fancy thread work, um, do what's called cross wraps, and some of them are just absolutely gorgeous. Um, but I belong to a different school. I belong to the school that the fewer restrictions you have to the, the, the free flexing of the blank. Uh, the better the rod is going to perform. It was designed to, to work from, from butt to tip um, and anything you do that restricts that, that ability to bend uh, to me is going to, is going to restrict the action of the rod which I don't want to do. So I try to keep everything as small as possible. My guide wraps are small, uh, use the smallest guides, use the lightest guides and when it comes to thread art um, every, every, every rod artist signs his work somehow or other. It goes back to the caveman days when they they drew on their caveman walls and they, they decorated their tools and they decorated their, their weapons. Um, it, it's, it's an ego thing perhaps. Um, but what I do is I weave, I can keep my art uh, inside of two inches instead of having 14 inches of cross wrap that goes from the, the uh, end of the foregrip to all the way through the first guide, which to me uh, is going to have you ending up with a three foot rod on a four foot handle. And I don't want that. I want that rod to be able to, to operate the way the designer designed the blank to operate from butt to tip as much as humanly possible given the fact that you gotta have the handle and the guides on. So tell me about this setup right here. What what actually goes into making a weave and how long does it take to do do something like that? Uh, I probably have anywhere from, from 10 to 12 hours on, on most weaves. Some of them, uh, my mermaid is a lot longer than that. Um, but we, we start by laying down the thread, marking the threads, uh, making color bands, and uh, Getting it all arranged, and then we go ahead. And we have to hang. We hang a weight on each on each uh, on each thread, uh, so that we have a, a thread corresponding to each each color in the pattern. So what are these little, What are these things that the threads are hanging over? What? Are, that, this is the weaving jig. It's there. There are two plexiglass hemispheres. They're grooved. This one is grooved with uh, 50. What's it say? 55 grooves, and they're all numbered. And we've got one on the other side, and he's got 56 because eh, that was sloppy. But those are all, all those little grooves are cut with a, with a file, with a little bastard file, and then that's where the threads are set while you make, while you actually do the, the weave itself. So that keeps them separated and they don't cross over each other and end up ruining the pattern. So, which side of the thread, how do you know which uh, color ends up on in, within the Everything weave? starts on the right side. If you want that, if you want that locus, that, that, that uh, graph locus to show, that thread will be moved to the left. And then the background is one thread, that's why it's a weave, They're actually threads are actually moved left and right, and the background thread that goes around it will determine whether you, that thread shows or, or doesn't, and that's what makes the pattern. I got you, and, and about how much time does it take when, uh, does it depend on the type of weave, like the type? So Jeff, how long does it take to, to do a weave, and are there certain ones that take longer than others? Um, is there ever a time that you would put more than one on a particular rod? Uh, it takes eight to ten hours generally to, to do a weave, um, plus a little time on the end, on the back side to, to finish it up, do the, do the finish work, uh, make it so that it looks like glass when you're done. Um, but the complexity of, of, the, of the fish, depending on the, the colors, how many different colors are in it, uh, how many threads are being used. This one's fairly simple. This one is uh, 81 threads and 109 steps. I've got some that are 200 threads and 150 steps. Uh, for the mermaid, for example, that, that take a lot longer to do. They take longer to set up, longer to weave, and longer to finish with. So, so how long have, have you been? You've been building rods for quite a while. So, would you say that this, this is something that people ask for? Uh, 
fifty percent of the time. People people ask for the well, people ask for this if they have the money to spend it, because um, I I try to get my my weaving to pay for itself. It usually doesn't. Now, when I lived in Texas, Texas the Texas the Texas fisherman is is a wade fisherman, and he fishes differently than the Alabama fisherman. The Texas wade fish trout fisherman has uh, two top of the line rod and reel combinations. He's got one in his boat and one in his hand because he's a wade fisherman. In Alabama, there isn't much wade fishing going on. It's becoming more popular as it should. It's, it's a fabulous way to, to hunt for speckled trout and redfish. But because they're they, they, in Alabama, they might have 10 rods and they're laying here, there, and everywhere in a boat. Um, they get stepped on, they get kicked, they have batteries slide in. Jeff, out of all the patterns that you do, which one would you say is the most popular? Uh, because of where we live and where I fish, it's mostly speckled trout or redfish. But speckled trout, by far, is, is the most uh, most requested. Awesome. Well, do you mind if we come back or share with our followers some of the pictures when you're actually finished with this particular red snapper? Anytime you want. All right, great. Be beers on you. All right, well, thanks for letting us come in today and talk about weaving. All right. for taking the time to watch this video today we hope you found it of some interest and some value we look forward to bringing other content to you throughout the season we'd also like you to go over if you have a chance to our bent outfitters fishing facebook page that's where we'll post most of the videos we'll also have a youtube channel that you can subscribe to so give us your feedback let us know what you'd like to see and until then stay bent <music>